Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe the structure of alkenes, including what's meant by a pi bond. You should then be able to describe why alkenes are reactive molecules. We've already looked at the structure of alkanes and I'm showing you here the alkane ethane. Remember that alkanes are saturated hydrocarbons with the general formula CnH2n plus 2. And all of the covalent bonds in alkanes are sigma bonds. Sigma bonds form when electron orbitals directly overlap. Now there are a couple of key ideas you need to remember. Firstly in alkanes the bond angles are tetrahedral, in other words 109.5 degrees. Secondly sigma bonds are freely rotational, so we could represent ethane like this instead. I'm showing you here the structure of the alkene ethene. Alkenes are unsaturated hydrocarbons with the general formula CnH2n. Now the first thing to notice is that ethene is a planar molecule, and we looked at planar molecules in the topic on structure and bonding. Planar molecules are flat, with all of the atoms lying on the same plane. Remember that when we're working out molecular shapes, we treat both single and double bonds as bonding regions. We've got three bonding regions around each carbon atom. These bonding regions repel and move as far apart as possible. So this means that the bond angles around the carbon atoms are around 120 degrees. Ok, now the bonding in ethene is different to ethane, and that's due to the double bond. The first thing to understand is that just like in ethane, we've got sigma bonds between the carbon atoms and the hydrogen atoms. However, the double bond actually consists of two types of covalent bonds. When the double bond forms, we make one sigma bond between the carbon atoms, and I'm showing that here. At this point, each carbon atom now has one electron left in a p orbital. These p orbitals lie above and below the plane of the molecule. The two p orbitals now overlap sideways, and they form a covalent bond called a pi bond, which is above and below the sigma bond. Now you need to understand that even though the overlap occurs both above and below the sigma bond, we've only formed one pi bond. Ok, so you need to bear in mind that the double bond in alkenes actually consists of both a sigma bond and a pi bond, and this has a major effect on both the structure and the reactivity of alkenes. Firstly, unlike sigma bonds, a pi bond cannot rotate. That's because any rotation would reduce the overlap of the p orbitals. Now because the pi bond cannot rotate, this means that the structure of an alkene across the double bond is effectively locked. We can see that here. This shows 1,2-dichloroethene. Now because the double bond cannot rotate, this molecule exists as two stereoisomers. These are called the E-isomer and the Z-isomer. And we looked at stereoisomerism in previous videos. So you need to remember that because the double bond cannot rotate, alkenes can form stereoisomers. Secondly, alkenes are highly reactive molecules and again, this is due to the double bond. Firstly, the bond enthalpy of the pi bond is less than the sigma bond. That's because a pi bond is a sideways overlap of orbitals, whereas in a sigma bond, the orbitals directly overlap. So because the orbitals overlap sideways, a pi bond is easier to break. And because it takes less energy to break the pi bond, it's more likely to take part in reactions. Secondly, the double bond contains two pairs of electrons. We've got a pair of electrons in the sigma bond and a pair of electrons in the pi bond. Because of this, the double bond is a region of high electron density. And as we'll see in the next video, this high electron density makes alkenes highly reactive molecules. Ok, in the next video we'll start looking at how alkenes react by electrophilic addition.